Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you can see from my voice, I'm shaking. Why? Because I've been social distancing for so long for the whole semester, and it's been so long since I met so many people. And thank you, every, thank you so much for being here today. Um, yes, it's such an honor for us to be here today to share with you the COVID-19 country report, the case of Vietnam. And as you already, as you already know, COVID-19 had left in the history of humankind to be the black swan with many profound impact on the human history. On, on the human history, um, with the risk. Upcoming, with the risk of the coming outbreak, it's difficult to predict what future holds. Therefore, it is important to share the practical experience and lessons from every country in the world so that we can all learn and apply those experience to the combat with COVID-19 by ourselves. And today, we are here to introduce the story of Vietnam. We will um, introduce with you the chain, the controlling factor, the impact, and the challenge that COVID-19 posed to Vietnam. Yes, as you can see here on the map, is the map from uh, the World Health Organization. Um, you can see that COVID-19 is an event of global significance because by today, there are over 9 million of infection cases and nearly half a million of deaths worldwide. And you can see here Vietnam, a very small country. We so far recorded 349 cases and the, in which 320 it, by today, 28 cases have been recovered, and so far we recorded no death. Yes, so uh, what makes Vietnam a, con a very a small, a lower middle income country with a population of 95 million and share more than 1,000 1, kilometers of border with China will be, be able to achieve that impressive result? Let's find out. As you can see here, the trend of COVID-19 in Vietnam, we can divide into three phases. The first, the first case of COVID-19 in Vietnam is detected in, by the end of January, and we call that the phase one. Uh, in, during, the first, during the first phase, Vietnam was already ready to announce the, the end of COVID-19. However, the alarming case in early of March, the case 17, has met Vietnam to re-decide and to, to announce the war with COVID-19 and the whole country enters the long uh, war uh, with COVID-19. Vietnam at that time faced uh, to face the questions of whether to apply the social restrictions or to apply herd immunity. Vietnam fully understands the national ability and situation that if Vietnam applies the herd immunity, we will have to risk the life of many people and because Vietnam has a very limited um, health care system and so um, therefore it will be a very high risk for Vietnam. Meanwhile, if we choose to apply the social decisions, Vietnam may have the chance to catch the golden time of breaking, of stopping the COVID-19 and um, ensuring the life of people. However, social decisions also mean that the economy of Vietnam will be affected. However, between the choice of economy or people, Vietnam had decided to protect, protect its people and leave no one behind. There are, many, there are many factors that contribute to the successful story of Vietnam, in which we focus mainly on two factors. The first one is global, the government policy, and the second, one, the second factor is the social uh, consensus. The governments of Vietnam have applied a series of strong policy to uh, prevent and to control the um, spread of COVID-19 in Vietnam. As you can see here on, on the screen, the first, the, the Alimin K, the K-17, has um, led to the first time Vietnam applied the blockage of residential area with 189 people have to current, go, on, go through quarantine. And then the second, um, the second point, important point of the COVID-19 pre prevention process is the second stage when Vietnam, on March 22nd, when Vietnam entered, officially announced that it entered the second stage with the social decision. And the third important uh, point is on March 21st, on March 21st, when Vietnam 
announce the social distancing for the whole country for the 15 days. And then the finals, um, and then on April 22nd, Vietnam announced that the whole country had moved to a long anti-epidemic period and restart the economy. So to, so to assess the uh, government policy, we can see that uh, Vietnamese government have applied a rapid and rustic response in the er very er early state of the epidemic with a series of very strict measures that help to prevent the COVID-19 spread in Vietnam. And according to an independent survey of YouGov, Vietnam is the number one country um, with, very, with, um, with highest level of uh, the, the people uh, when they agree that the government have handling well the COVID-19. And the second factor we are talking about is the social consensus of people. Uh, as you can see here, there are two pictures. The first one is taken on um, 2019 at the uh, North Korea and US summit in Hanoi. And the second picture is taken the first day after the government implied the social distancing policy. And you can see that there is very limited people because Vietnamese people, they obey the recommendation of the government to stay home. Social consensus has been a very important factor for Vietnam to fight against COVID-19. That's why we also conduct a survey to ask people for their assessment on uh, the transparency of COVID-19 pandemic in Vietnam, that their trust level on the government and their, their overall satisfaction on the COVID-19 handling in Vietnam. And as you can see here, the results are impressively high. So how has COVID-19 impacted Vietnam? Um, within the scope of the research, COVID-19 has affected many aspects of Vietnam. However, within the scope of the research, we focus mainly on the economic aspect. And as you can see here, um, recent year, Vietnam has been emerging as, a, uh, amongst, as one of the countries with very high um, economic growth rate. However, since the, since the outbreak of COVID-19, the um, economic growth rate of Vietnam has been dropped drop, uh, dram dramatically. And then uh, with international trade um, with, with uh, important export also have the same um, decree. Many factors of, uh, Vietnam, of the Vietnam's economy has been uh, impacted heavily. You can see here all the, all the index are negative in manufacturing, tourism, and education training are just um, the sample. COVID-19 posed many challenges for Vietnam, including in economy, you can see here the supply chain disruption, reduction in supply, demand, the raise in employment, and um, enterprise, many enterprises went bankruptcy, and it's posed challenge for Vietnam how to, you know, uh, how to restructure the economy to uh, promote the resilience of the economy to um, against the external fluctuations. For the societies, COVID-19 posed challenge for Vietnam to help people and business to overcome uh, the difficult times and to return to the new normal post-COVID-19. It also raised ch challenge for the public health and uh, to the technology of Vietnam to deal with the risks of the second outbreak. For the international cooperation, COVID-19 posed challenge for Vietnam because Vietnam needs to promote cooperation with other countries to, um, to share information and experience and also to, um, to share benefits and to ensure sovereignty. So in conclusion, um, COVID-19 has bring a lot of lessons for Vietnam, among them, um, the most important, um, the key of success for Vietnam is the unity of three factors, as you can see here, the state, the social consensus, and the public health. The, the Vietnam, thanks for the unity of Vietnamese state, social consensus, and public health, that ha have achieved um, success in the first days of uh, the, the war against COVID-19. Vietnam, with the drastic um, epidemic prevention policy, publicity, and transparency of information, all societies share responsibility, consensus, and cooperation with the government. And with a quick response and systematic and professional public health, all these three factors have contributed to the, success of, uh, to the successful story of um, COVID-19 prevention in Vietnam. So, however, success in the first state of uh, prevention, COVID-19 prevention doesn't guarantee Vietnam for success in the next step. Therefore, Vietnam needs to always be ready for 
uh, new de development of COVID-19 in the future. And COVID-19 is a catastrophic pandemic, but it's also a test for all from, from nation to individual. And what we can do now is to always stay op optimistic and to reverse the difficult and to reverse the difficulties and challenges that COVID-19 brings into opportunities for innovation and growth. COVID-19 may last for months, even for years. Therefore, it is important for every one of us, for every individual, to share the responsibility to stay healthy for not only ourselves, but, only for, but also for the community. Together, we can fight COVID-19. And let's enjoy a quick video of how to stay healthy with COVID-19. Social distance, avoid the crowds. Fight against the corona, corona. Practice good hygiene and keep your personal space clean. Respect the social distancing. Fight against the corona, corona. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you all stay healthy and. Um, Let's just stay healthy for yourself and for the community. Thank you so much. It was presentation from Grand Prize winner, Team Vietnam. Um, before we start the next presentation, uh, there is a small announcement. Uh, for your information, we will have Q&A session after all presentations are finished. For those of whom are uh, watching YouTube, uh, we are monitoring all the comments and all the questions. So please feel free to ask any questions or comments for the presentations. And now we will begin the next presentation. The next presentation is from first prize winner, Team Peru. Please come up to the stage and make a presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. And I, I want to present today the, what's happening in Peru, in South America. And first of all, I want to, um, this is the list of contents. As you can see, first of all, I want to um, show you some trends, also the health strategies that the Ministry of Health of the Peruvian government made to face the, the pandemic. Also, public policies to face the COVID-19 with positive and negative impact. Because this, this pandemic was really, is, is a new pandemic, is different for, from SARS. Also in South America, we, we haven't, we hadn't the MERS in 2015, so we were not so prepared as in Asia. And then I want to talk about the intergovernmental response, political communication, and transparency that are really, for me, I think there are, we have to, I put on the table this, this topic because we have to think about also the public official, the civil society wants to think about that, about to, to face, uh, to have the trust of the citizens. Peru government like imposed the lockdown, the national, uh, national state emergency in March 16th. So there's a question here. Why are there so many COVID-19 cases in Peru? Too many people like, ask that. So we have to show another factors that are in, uh, are maybe increasing these, these cases in Peru. Also some challenges and the conclusions. So first of all, there's, there's the, here there's the uh, 10 countries that have more uh, cases in the world. But I have to focus in three countries. Brazil is the second, Peru is the sixth, and Chile is the seventh. But the, the important thing here as, a, as the citizens of societal, uh, civil society or the public officials, does that Brazil, Chile, and Peru made different public policies to face the pandemic. But so that we have like three countries in South America with the same culture, same society background, but different approaches. But unfortunately, we have in the top 10 now with the most cases. Here we have the, the, the COVID-19 positive cases in Peru. Have you seen from April, it start to, to rise. And here is the, in the, maybe here we have like, we implement, a, or the government implement a political by gender, like, like 
you have to quarantine by gender, if it realized that then I will explain that it was not a good decision. Also, this policy implemented in Panama and also in in Colombia. And in the in the in the middle of 24th May, also we start reopening the economy with some activities. But as you see, in one month we have. Uh, duplicate the cases, so it has to be impact about the the recovery of the economy. Here we have like health strategies. Also, Peru started as South Korea made like massive tests and tracing. And um, for example, you can see here that we have like uh, we have made like more than one million uh, five thousand uh, tests. But here. The polymerase chain reaction test, the molecular test, we made like 200,015, but rapid test more than 1 million. Also, uh, this is different from Chile. For example, Chile is made like more than 800,000, but all the, the tests in Chile are, are from polymerase chain res, uh, uh, reaction tests, so these are molecular tests. Also, for our economies, the, the molecular tests are more expensive. And the rapid test, we have like an issue with the society because we, as you know, is spending like both from China, from one enterprise, rapid test. But unfortunately, these tests, rapid tests, uh, have not the legally approved of the of the like the uh, drugs drugs institution. So for that, also there was a a wave in Peru, also in another countries, that the rapid tests uh, uh, didn't work. And that is, is, is bad because the uh, population doesn't believe in the government. So we have to face also the information of, and show to the population that the test that we have both as a country, as a government, is like from like legitimate industries to, to they believe in that. Here we have like uh, also just I, I choose like the ten countries in Latin America that made more more discard tests. So we have like Brazil with a population more than 200 uh, uh, thousand uh, population. They made like two million and a half. Also they have like more or less like more than one million positive, positive case. Peru. Peru is the population of 31, almost 32 millions of population. We made the government made the effort to to make like one one million five hundred uh, thousand discard tests. As you see, also Chile is like near to one million. But also, I, I have to focus also on Bolivia. Bolivia, Panama, as you see, they have made like 58 thousand discard tests. Also, 100. Thousand discard test. So in some Latin American countries, I think in other countries or from Asia or from Europe also, the population of the civil society is is like concerned because they don't see that the response of the government is like really hard to face this pandemic. So it is not sometimes trust trustable from the population to to see if the real cases are are shown by the the government. So is this an issue that we have to uh, to analyze as a public official also? Then Peru may, uh, 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 create an application, an app, Peru in two manos. It's Peru in your hands. So this application is like the applications here in South Korea that may alerts uh, show the the areas or or zones that there are more positive cases. The the places that the, the positive cases patients have been before the, the quarantine or isolation. And the important thing is also here that they are, you have to, uh, you, you could do your uh, a triage. So you can make a triage, a simple triage, and this information arrives to the uh, Ministry of Health. So Ministry of Health, like, made in contact with you. And that is like uh, avoiding that the population or the the possible patients go to to the hospitals that are really crowded now. Also, we we may like improve our health response capacity. That's a good thing, I think, that, uh, for from Latin America that it, it starts here in Asia. We know the the outbreak, but we have like that the World Health Organization said we have time to 
improve our health system in that to, to have a good response. But the problem was in some Latin American countries that they are they were believing that in 2015, the MERS 2015 from Asia or some European countries didn't arrive uh, to South America. They were thinking, oh, this pandemic also didn't get to South America. They are thinking, oh, we have no direct flights from Asia. We have like like 24 hours by by airplane. So there was like a confidence. And also in Peru at that time, we were in, in January or December, we were facing dengue. So we have focused more in dengue because the media also was focusing on de and dengue. So we are like skipping this, this situation like with the, the real importance that we have to make. But here, as you, as you can see, before the pandemic, we have like 247 just intensive care beds with ventilators. This is a real problem. And by June, by until June 20, 21st, we have like 1,318 ventilators with intensive care beds. But this is a, there's a problem also because the ventilators were like really required by many countries. And the price of a ventilator is like, before the pandemic were like near to $20,000, but nowadays it's more than $100,000. So also, as you see, in one case, Spain like bought more than 100 ventilators from China, but when the the airplane stopped in Turkey, Turkey like confiscate the ventilators because it's like a, a war pandemic. So it's really, for that Peru did, is buying ventilators, but it's not like, it's like in cooperation with, with Lufthansa from Germany that the, the airplanes may like transfer there to, to avoid this situation. Also that's hospital bed. Before, in 2000, the data I have that 2015, we have like more than more or less like 50,000 uh, hospital beds, like it's like 15.9 per 10,000 inhabitants. And no, nowadays we are like using almost 10,500 uh, beds just for COVID-19 patients. But here you see I put health oxygen because why health oxygen? Because the government, the Ministry of Health were, were facing a hosp a hospital beds were facing also intensive care beds with ventilators, but never seeing about uh, health oxygen, medical oxygen. But one day in some city of the of the jungle in Peru, the rainforest, there were there was uh, there were run out of oxygen. So in like in that day, many people died in that city because the just uh, the, in that city there was just uh, one company to 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 provide this health oxygen. So the response of, as you can see here, for example, the population also, if you have a patient in the hospital, the hospital is run of, of health oxygen, so you have to get your own health oxygen. So these people have like some family that is like in the intensive care unit, and they have to go by themselves to, to buy health oxygen. So it was like a big, big problem in Peru. Also, what's the response of civil society? The civil society donate like $500 in one or two days to to provide health oxygen in the jungle, in the rainforest. Also, the government emit an uh, urgency de decree that changed the rules because before just 99% uh, of, uh, of the level of oxygen are provided to unit care beds, but also the, the experts made that also, the 93% in above, like is used, is used. It could be used for ventilators. So we choose, we change the, the law to allow another companies could provide uh, health oxygen, medical oxygen to the hospital. And also, the Ministry of Health created a working group to supervise the medical oxygen supply in all the country. And, and uh, it was a, a case also that two enterprises, private enterprises, like like. Uh, lay, they according prices uh, to provide to the uh, some some hospitals. So the court supreme like uh, impose a, a penalty of seven million dollars. So another health strategy that Peru uh, implement. The government created many groups. The COVID-19 operation group. This group is like to regard all the operation in all the hospitals. 
uh, how many uh, intensive care beds you have, how many ventilators. The ventilator could be moved to another. I, I have to hire uh, ph uh, physicians for this hospital. Everything about the operation of the of the uh, hospital uh, area. Then we have also another uh, the health innovation group. Health innovation innovation group was a group of experts that focus just in the sanitary intelligence to improve to to implement new uh, health strategies. For example, uh, some days ago, uh, we have a, a good news about the, the uni one university in Peru, like the laboratory created a molecular test that is, they are proving now. Because of that, we, can, we, we could like, have the national uh, molecular test as South Korea implemented after uh, MERS 2015. Also, we have a bioethics group. It that is really important because uh, there were some declarations about some medical doctors that said, we are deciding who patient will live and who patient will go to unit care bed and, and who patient will won't. So it was really hard for the society to know if you are all, if you are all, you, are, you cannot like the opportunity to go to unit care beds because we prefer that young people. So it was a bioethics group. They are like managing the ethical for the, the health response. And then that's, that was an important, I think it's the first time that the Ministry of Health like, like Im implemented the social cultural group. Because we have, in Latin America, we have different cultures, different uh, cultural behavior than in Asia, or, for example. And it was, they are carry, carry about, they are regarding the, also the vulnerable people. So it was really, but because this pandemic is like, they is changing every day. Also, we are not like worry about the native communities of the jungle and the rainforest. We have native communities that they have their own laws. But the, the, the last months, they get also infected. So also they have their own belief, their own laws. So we cannot like enter so like, the, like in a normal city or a, a, not saying normally to a, in, a, in, a, in a regular city. No? So for that, we, we created the Native American group. They are regarding also the facing COVID-19, but in these in this, uh, tribes of these Native American groups. Then I want to show you also the Peru and other epidemic diseases. So, for example, we have in 2020, as, you, as I, I told you before, we have dengue cases. We have more than 26,000 dengue cases. Also, the, the death rate is really low, but these patients are also in, at the hospital. So we have like crowd hospital before the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's not like the fatality rate is not so high, but also the, the using the the health, the hospital is, is it's important because we have like many patients. Also, the, the last year we, we faced um, um, a rare disease, Guillain-Barré syndrome. This is a disease that uh, uh, your body, your muscles start to, to, to stop, and also your lungs at the end start to stop, and you could die if you have not a ventilator in a unique disease. So in 2019, we have like, more than 1,000 cases and 38 days. Also, we have in 2008 and 2009 H1N1 influenza. In this case, we have like 9,000 cases and 200 deaths. And we, um, some many, uh, like 30 years ago, we have cholera. In 91, we have like 400 cases of cholera and uh, three 100 uh, hundreds, uh, uh, deaths. But the question here is, and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, MERS 2000, 2015, what's happened in Peru and in South America? Happily at that time, happily and happily, because happily at that time we didn't get the, the, the disease. But the bad thing is that all the South American countries didn't prepare for a new pandemic, for a new disease, as in Asia. For example, here in South Korea, they, uh, here suffered of COVID, uh, MERS 2015, and there were also political issues to, to improve the intensive care cares. Okay. We have like, uh, here the like public policies 
aprendo en casa I learned at home it was a, a good uh, policy too because we have the, in the public school we have no like computers at home we have like all the the, the lessons were by television also by radio in some places but the problem here is also we have another problem that 42 percent of the rural homes have no television at home. Also, more than six, uh, 66 percent of the households have no laptop or computer at home. But the Ministry of Education bought like one million of of mobile in, uh, tablets with mobile internet for the students, or also for for teachers. But we face another challenge here. Some we have cities over three thousand or four or four thousand uh, over the the sea high. So there's no connectivity there. So the people, the, the citizens have to go to the mountains, to the high mountains to get to get the, the connectivity of radio. Then we implement the gender quarantine. Gender quarantine also was implemented, as I said before, in Colombia, also in Panama. But it was a bad, at the end, a bad policy because we, uh, the government said, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, just the men can go out to, to buy groceries. Tuesday, Saturday, and Saturday, women. But what happened? Just unfortunately, just to the to buy the groceries in Peru and on, in many South American countries are the women. So, in Tuesday, Thursday, uh, in, in the in the days that the men have to go out, they didn't go. But the other days, they crowd about women buying the stuff. So it was uh, a problem then. Here we have also financial support to workers. It like, you can see, twenty uh, two hundred twenty-three dollars for for six point eight eight million of population. That it represents seventy percent of of households in Peru. Also, we have like a, here uh, the percentage of other countries as Chile, fifty-eight dollars, Brazil, one hundred thirteen dollars. Then, but also uh, the executive branch, author, uh, uh, like actor decides that seven, you can get also $730 from your compensation fund if you get like higher. Also, you, you are the contribution for the pension were, uh, were suspended. And the workers to the private, affiliated to the private pension systems also could get $606 from their own private account. Also, with the devolution of the income tax from January and February to the to the workers, but a problem here also is the the the, the fight between executive branch and Congress because Congress emit a law that you can get three thousand nine hundred dollars from your private funds. So there's also the populism. Sometimes some people say that there's a populism measured by the by the Congress. Also, we have like financial uh, uh, support to enterprises for for example a reactive program also the fine program it was like almost uh, 10 billion dollars to support the credit to enterprises with low rate of interest with the with the uh, guarantee of the government also we have the economy recovery here in in, in may started in june also continue also uh, until august and this is an important issue that all some business change their their business line. For example, a cafe uh, converting a supermarket. Then the intergovernment response is really important, I see, because, for example, in Peru, the central government works very well. But in Brazil, President Bolsonaro didn't work. Just the federalism uh, made some issues. But here in South Korea, for example, the local government, the Seoul local government works very well. The presidential leadership. Here in Peru, the presidents, almost 90% of days, go out to, to, to on television to, to talk about the measures that implemented. Also, the transparency in debt. Now in South America, there's a big issue because the national the register, uh, national register of, of debt is different from the, the, the debt that they are reporting to the World Health Organization. So, for example, for that, the Minister of Health of Chile was changed the last week. Also, the social and cultural customs. For example, in Peru, for say hi between women and men, we may a kiss, we shake hands also, and also we share the, the in between friends, we share the the the, the same glass of, to to share the beer. So there was behavior that we have to change. Here, for example, uh, no more shake hands, just but we have also some touch because 
like the culture we we also we are, the people are missing that here in South Korea the outbreak was were, was in in some churches and some nightclubs in Peru in the food market as you see the people is like crowding in market it was that that's a, a reason that the experts said that just the 49% of the population of the households has a, has have not a refrigerator at home so they have to go buy groceries or buy meat by every day also the labor informality uh, we have the 70% of workers are, are, are informal also the uh, in the production decrease in 40% in April and um, we have lost just in the capital more than 2 million of of work so that's important because if you are not formal you you have no life pounds from your uh, pension system you have no from some from from your taxes etc also another another uh, factor is the overcrowd uh, living conditions and the migrations overcrowd uh, because for example in one survey of the national institute we say that more than 1 million 800 people families live with three of two mem of two five members in they share one or two bedrooms so it's overcrowded some 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 houses and also the migration because of the political problem of Venezuela we have like one million of population what are the challenges the recovery economy and health response capacity have to be like implemented at the same time implemented digital services teleworking telehealth and teleeducation access to banking services new social convivial promote the formalization of employment and, and to finish my conclusions are this pandemic is an opportunity to improve our health system and services and implement public policies to face it and also the most important as we can only overcome the COVID-19 crisis with union of government social participation business drive and academia thank you Thank you very much. It's, it was from the team Peru. Uh, before we start the other presentation, uh, there's a notification uh, for those who, who are going to present next. Uh, the time limit is uh, 15 minutes. Uh, since we have a lot of team, uh, please be aware of your time. Um, our staff over there, we may consign that you have five minutes or one minute. So please check your time and Let's begin the uh, next presentation. So next presentation is from second prize winner, Team Vietnam. Uh, please come up to the front and make a presentation, please. So hello everyone, my name is Leitu and today I would like to present our report for the trend impact and post-COVID-19 challenges in Vietnam. And here are some takeaway points from our report. Uh, Vietnam is a lower middle income country with a fragile health system and a socialist political system. Um, in addition, Vietnam is considered as a high risk country uh, during the COVID-19 because we have an intense economic activities and the long borders with China, especially we have a large number of Chinese tourists come to Vietnam every year. And uh, in addition, Vietnam is ranked in the top 20 high-risk countries during COVID-19. However, having said that, Vietnam has a good performance in COVID-19 with more than 300 cases and without that so far. So why, what reason makes Vietnam become a successful country in fighting the COVID-19? In our report, we point out two most important factors. So the first one is the early and extreme actions from the government, but it turns out that is very effective in case of Vietnam. And the second one is the high compliance and cooperation from the citizens. So you can see here um, is uh, the figure that illustrates the trend of COVID-19 in Vietnam. Actually, you can see the differences between our re reports with uh, the previous report from another team of Vietnam. Uh, so in our case, we uh, divided the trend of COVID-19 in Vietnam into four periods. So the first one is um, 
from January uh, 23 to fe February uh, 13. So uh, this is from day one to day 22 with 16 conference cases. So in the second period from February 14 to March 5th, you can see here that there was no new cases in Vietnam. And then in the next period from March 6th to April 15, you can see that um, the seventh case was confirmed and more cases. And this is actually um, like the most serious period during the COVID-19 in Vietnam. And then in the next uh, period from April 16 to June uh, 13, at the time we finished our report, that there, there were no new domestic case in Vietnam, they're just imported cases. And among many actors and fighters that contribute to the uh, success of Vietnam in fighting COVID-19, in our report, we point out the two most important factors is the essential role of government and the society in controlling the COVID-19. So uh, you can see here that we provide the table uh, to illustrate the critical policies of the Vietnam government regarding the containment measures. So you can see that there are um, eight components, including school closing, uh, work, workplace closing, canceling public events, gathering restricted public transportation closing, staying at home requirement, uh, restricting domestic travel and international travel. To sum up, if you look at this table, you can see if I can use one word to describe all of the policies of Vietnamese government, I use the word extreme. You can see that all of the policies here, very extreme, like uh, it forces Vietnamese people to obey the policy to, uh, like for example, if you look at uh, the public transportation from March, especially after uh, 31 March, public transportation of all cities and province will be closed. Um, and another example is staying at home requirement. You can see that from April 1st until April 23rd, all Vietnamese must stay at home and can only uh, go outside for essential needs. So it's kind of social distancing period in Vietnam during this time. Um, Apart from that, government also uh, applied many policies in terms of health measures and quarantine policies. So as for health measures, you can see that uh, the government applied the testing policies and the contact tracing. For our testing policies, actually uh, during this time, all the Vietnamese people who have the symptoms with, uh, who have the symptom related to coronavirus, will get the free test. And um, in addition, Vietnam also was successful in developing the own real-time RT-PCR test kit in early March that uh, increased the number of COVID-19 tests in Vietnam uh, from March, March 1st to uh, April 1st. And as for the contact tracing, um, Vietnamese government divide uh, the people who have the symptoms with related coronavirus and people who directly contact to them to different groups, F1, F2, F3, and so on. So for example, for F1 group is the person who directly uh, contact with the person who was uh, positively tested for coronavirus. And F2 is people who have uh, close uh, who have uh, close contact with F1 and the same thing with another group. So in this way, it's very easy for government to monitor individuals with different risks and especially the government can focus on the one with high risks and this way can help to save the re resources, right? And for the quarantine policies, it's very strict quarantine policies with uh, uh, military forces in considerations with different groups, F1, F2, F3, and, and so on. So 
We point out in our research that the early responses of Vietnam and other selected Asian countries by using the stringency index. So stringency index indicates the containment policies and the, the higher index uh, will be uh, referred to the higher level of stringency. So it is equally weighted average of nine subscores from nine indicators. So we got the results here from, from the research um, of home at uh, 2020. And you, and you can see here that among uh, selected Asian countries, Vietnam is the country uh, that has the highest stringency index. So uh, you can see that we have very low um, total COVID-19 cases in this case, right? So why the Vietnamese government acts quickly? In our view of point, points of views, so it depends on the political system. The outcome of the fight against COVID-19 is very important for the political reputation and political career prospects in the upcoming um, 13th National Congress of Communist Party of Vietnam, which will be held in early 2021. So in this case, the government was willing to trade off between economic benefits and extreme response at the beginning. In addition, Vietnam with the limited resources as the lower middle income countries, we have no way except prevention is better than cure. And then, it comes from the demand from the society. Uh, so as I just mentioned in my uh, presentation earlier, that we point out to the two most important factors that can contribute to the success of Vietnam in fighting COVID-19, right? So um, apart from the key role of government, we have to mention the society. So um, a research conducted in 2000, Twenty point out that um, a survey among two, uh, more than 300 Vietnamese citizens it figured out that there was a high risk perception of COVID-19 among Vietnamese citizens. And um, Vietnam citizens were willing to sacrifice their own freedom rights and short-term economic benefits to first protect themselves and their second protect others. And Apart from all of these things, um, we have to mention the great influence of many uh, KOLs like, and celebrities such as singers, dancers, and actors. And uh, I'm not sure whether you will know this song. And luckily, the previous Vietnamese team already played the song for you. So I still remember that this song first time um, appeared on the show of Oli John Oliver, maybe, or Oliver John, uh, I don't remember. But at that time, I still remember that, I still remember that this uh, video went viral, and everyone knows about this song. Everyone danced this song, uh, sing this song, and until now. So I think um, Vietnamese government, Vietnamese society uh, did very well in, encourage, uh, in encouraging Vietnamese people to uh, fight uh, COVID-19 by staying at home more than that. Yeah, thank you. And um, COVID-19 has many impacts uh, in Vietnam. So first, we have to point out the negative impacts of COVID-19 in the economy. So if you look at this table, uh, especially look at the GDP growth and PMI index. So PMI is purchase um, manufacturing index. If it's uh, more than 50, it's good, but if it's lower than 50, it's not good. So in this case, you can see that the PMI index of Vietnam in April was very low. Um, apart from that, we have to mention the increase in unemployment rate and um, the credits to current institutions. However, um, in, in the positive side, we can see that the success uh, for Cases of Vietnam in fighting COVID-19 can help to, um, you know, like the position and image of Vietnam in the international community has been slightly improve, improving. Um, 
although Vietnam so far has been uh, relatively successful in fighting COVID-19, however, however, we have to mention that Vietnam government and uh, Vietnamese have to face many challenges in fighting COVID-19 in the upcoming time. How to maintain the country's good performance in combating the pandemic, as well as the COVID-19 is unpredictable, complicated, along with the negative impact of the pandemic on social economic continue to happen and cannot be assessed. So is, in this case, it is necessary to have an immediate long-term policies and solutions to minimize negative impacts of epidemics and overcome the difficulties and challenges. So in this case, we think that uh, the statement from Asian 2020 is very important, like uh, cohesive and responsive. So all of Asian countries should cooperate together to fight so much for your attention. Uh, so it was the presentation from Team Vietnam. So next presentation is from second prize winner from France. Um, Carol Cardinet is an exchange student from France. Unfortunately, uh, she went back to her country before our symposium. However, she was so kind to send us her uh, presentation with record. So let's watch this presentation from Team France. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Coralie Cagino. Uh, I'm a student at Sciences Po Paris University. I'm a semester student at SNU at the Department of Philosophy. And today I have the great pleasure and honor to present to you my work on how French government reacted to COVID-19 uh, outbreak. So the trend, impacts and post-COVID-19 challenges. I would like, first of all, to uh, thank the uh, Asia Regional uh, Information Center, and especially the director, uh, Professor Kilkon Ko, for this really good initiative. Uh, I believe that this contest was an opportunity to get a bit more familiar with our government um, organization and how they could actually respond to uh, crisis such as COVID-19. So here is the, an overview of our discussion together. So I will come first over the training impacts of COVID-19. Then I will talk about the French response to this crisis. And in the third place, I will draw some comparisons with South Korea. Finally, I would like to show you that COVID-19 should be seen uh, and looked at as a great opportunity. So here is a quick timeline of uh, French government's main decisions. So on March the 16th, we got to know a lockdown here in France. On April the 13th, the lockdown was extended. On May the 11th, the lockdown was ended. And finally, um, last week on June the 14th, actually uh, we got to know a full return to normal. The COVID-19 trend is the following. So around the 19th to 20th um, of March, we reached our maximum, our biggest number uh, in terms of people, uh, new people getting infected by COVID-19. Uh, after this, uh, numbers got to decrease. COVID-19 uh, had uh, wide impacts Economi economically and financially talking. So regarding economic uh, impacts, well, uh, the GDP growth forecast totally shifted for 2020 and 2021. As you can see uh, in, in light blue, we have, well, the forecast and in dark blue, uh, what is now uh, the new forecast. Regarding financial impacts, as you can see here again, um, well, Many companies were uh, affected, impacted by this COVID-19. 
and especially companies that at the real origin uh, had not really positive um, financial uh, statement. So it was a case for the bank, uh, Société Générale, uh, that took lots of risks over the past years, and COVID-19 made it worse for these kinds of companies. Here is the, the evolution of the CAC 40, the index of the, the all the stocks gathered of French uh, of French uh, finance. As you can see, around again the 19th, 20th of March, uh, the value of CAC 40 was divided by two, so lost 50 persons of this of his value, which is which is really uh, a tremendous shift. So we might answer ourselves, what happened? Well, many things happened uh, concerning uh, COVID-19 um, and how French government respond to it. Uh, first of all, we can't deny that um, French government was not really prepared to face any sort of crisis and hence was not prepared to face COVID-19 crisis. As you can see here, I took, I believe, a good indicator, um, the number of hospital beds, that actually uh, defines if hospitals are really able to receive a number, a certain number of patients, which is really important in the case of COVID-19. So as you can see from 1998 uh, to nowadays, um, especially 2018, we lost um, around 95,000 um, hospital beds, which is a big, a big increase, a sharp increase that led actually to um, an original background and situation that was not really ready to be um, uh, in favor of a good management. Uh, this reduction of the hospital beds number comes from a set of flows, uh, especially laws uh, that, appeared, that appeared to be in 1979 and 1991. They were clearly saying uh, and showing that we needed to reduce the number of hospital beds. Um, these laws are more broadly encrypted into a movement, uh, an ideology of centralization, of administration, administrative centralization, uh, actually aiming at facilitating, um, well, uh, French health system organization. It didn't work out that well as we saw it with COVID-19. So we didn't, we were not really organized at the origin, but then during the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, a certain mismanagement appeared from part of French government. Um, so we were not uh, having masks, or at least not enough for, uh, well, the public. And French government decided not to test um, its population. So basically, knowing this, French government decided to, uh, well, uh, use the solution of lockdown that I will call to be a last resort uh, solution in this case. Here is the, um, an extract of a paper that was made by Fabrizio Vizio. Uh, he's a lawyer and uh, he received several complaints from, um, from French citizens regarding the management of the crisis and the fact that masks didn't have, didn't, like, were not received on time uh, despite all uh, the demons that were made. Talking about masks and uh, tests, we can't ignore you know, as well sometimes uh, in any um, times of crisis, the decisions that politicians are taking. Uh, here is a picture on your left, on your right, of the minister, the former health minister, Agnès Buzyn. She left her position uh, to run for municipal elections in Paris. And this was seen uh, as maybe not totally um, appropriate regarding the, uh, the COVID-19. This leads me actually to tackle another uh, issue that we faced during COVID-19 outbreak in France, that was the role of media, uh, still uh, ongoing. 
uh, here is a survey of um, what activities were uh, French people mainly doing during the lockdown. And the first one is watching TV. So this shows that French people, French citizens were fully aware of what was being said and done from part of French government. And knowing this, um, well, two debates took a huge proportion and a huge part in the democratic life of uh, French citizens. The first one appeared to be about uh, the use of uh, hydroxychloroquine, and another one appeared to be about COVID-19 appearance. So uh, the Professor de Diaraoul, uh, that is located in Marseille, has been using so far um, this hydroxychloroquine on patients, and it, it worked out. But um, other parts, uh, other communities of scientists um, made some studies showing that it was not really uh, sure 100% it was working. In the case of the Professor Luc Montagnier, uh, he discovered uh, that COVID-19 was actually containing small parts of AIDS, and that hence COVID-19 should could have not really appeared on uh, any Wuhan market. So these debates appeared in the, in the French sphere and led to a monopolisa monopolization um, and uh, less focus on what was really important. Here now we are coming to our comparisons uh, between French and South Korean governments. So as you can see here, taking up again uh, this uh, hospital beds number, we can see that uh, South Korea decided actually to increase this number, which is not the case of France. So we have actually two different, uh, two different, um, well, arguments here to take uh, into account. First, governments, French and South Korean, had two different health systems, actually like original situation. But also, we have here two different cultures. In Asia and hence in South Korea, it's more something really normal and democratized to wear a mask, which is not the case in France. Another thing as well is the way um, South Korea democratized or have more democratization around the use of technologies in order to trace uh, infected uh, people by COVID-19, which in France is as well a huge debate, a hot topic that is uh, widely contested for privacy matters. So hence, we can see that two different approaches to COVID-19 pandemic crisis uh, well, appeared. Uh, in the case of France, a lockdown could have been avoided. And here I will conclude that um, it was the last resort, the last decision uh, we, could, we could take. Uh, we didn't have masks, didn't have, um, well, a prepared health system, and we didn't have a culture of masks. So the lockdown was the only decision French government um, had to take, actually, which was not the case with South Korea for other, other matters, for other reasons. And um, that's, that's pretty all, and that's a kind of conclusion here. On the right, really quickly, you can see a paper, really important one. Uh, this paper is actually the paper we had to fill in France during the whole lockdown in order to go out of our house. So we had to justify to French authorities, or we were fined, why we were going out. Um, so I believe that as well, uh, the approach to COVID-19 uh, from part of French government showed that maybe uh, a certain trust was not already presence between the people and, uh, well, uh, the politicians. So how COVID-19 might actually be a great opportunity? So here you can see on the left a book that was written by um, Feridum Estandari. He's an Iranian thinker, and he wrote, well, uh, Upwingers. Um, and in this book, he's really putting forward the need for optimistic thoughts and the way sometimes we might be addressing um, crisis in the aftermath. 
So I took this book here um, as an example. Uh, you can read the quotes to articulate what I believe uh, COVID-19 might be uh, symbolizing. I believe that today uh, we are all gathered and that the public I am discussing with is the dying uh, public administration. So you will be, are you already the generation of civil servants of your own country? And it's really important to look at such crises to see what are the weaknesses of our governance and to better ourselves, um, well, make our country just better off, actually. That's the idea. So we should see COVID-19 as a kind of revelation, um, a crisis that unveiled weaknesses that we should work on. So um, that's it for my presentation. Uh, I'm looking forward to other presentations. If you have any, any question, just feel free to reach me by email. It will be my, my pleasure to answer back to them. And um, well, thank you again.